Greeting shippers, welcome back, and it's time to dive back into the realm of ships. This time we're going to get back into the realm of crossover and look at a ship that is trying to bridge the gap between two rival and actively feuding companies. We're talking of course about comic book powerhouse rivals Marvel and DC. It's Iron Bat, the pairing of Tony Stark's Iron Man and Bruce Wayne's Batman. This is a ship that has a fascinating canon history, sort of, even though it very quickly veers into fanon. Now before we get started, this is not the first crossover vid we have done on this channel far from it, so please feel free to check out Jelsa, which we did way back in the day, Jim Hawkins and Ariel, we've done that as well, and of course the canon romantic crossover of Robin and Jubilee. Yes, that really happened. I will have all of those links down below in case you missed any of those fun crossover vids. Now for those who do recall the Robin and Jubilee crossover vid, you may remember that that pairing came to us from a crossover miniseries that pitted many DC and Marvel heroes against each other in a bunch of versus matches. This miniseries ultimately led up to what was called the Amalgam Universe. The culmination of Amalgam Comics, the banner under which a combined universe was created. This arose as an independent entity, and was created so as not to privilege one company over the other. The DC vs Marvel crossover miniseries was separately published by each company respectively. While those comics which gave us Jubilee and Robin were a series of verses, answering some burning questions for fans as to who would win in a fight, the Amalgam universe was something else. This universe was a fictional representation of the conflict between the two companies manifesting in a shared universe, full of combined characters, meaning characters that shared similarities or were perceived to share similarities were combined. This universe appeared on two separate instances in 1996 and 1997. This included such classics as Dark Claw, aka Logan Wayne, a fusion of Batman and Wolverine, Super Soldier, a fusion of Superman and Captain America, Amazon, Wonder Woman and Storm, Iron Lantern, Doctor Doomsday, and many, many more. One of my favorites being Captain Marvel, the combination of the two Captain Marvels, particularly amusing in light of Shazam losing the rights to his name in recent memory. Recent at the time of this recording, at least. While this universe was entertaining and is remembered with fondness, at the very least for the unique factor and the sight of the two companies working together, the combination of characters didn't make sense to everyone. And there were some who created their own amalgam characters out of pairings they felt had been overlooked. One such character was Iron Bat, aka Tony Wayne, a few of Iron Man and Batman. Now this iteration is not a ship, but rather an observation, mainly of the fact that these two characters share a lot of similarities. Both rich with playboy personas, albeit with varying degrees of authenticity, both shaped by tragic occurrences in their backstories involving the deaths of their parents, although Tony takes some additional pushing to become Iron Man, both lacking in super slash meta abilities, both flawed and coping in not the healthiest ways. And the list could go on. This has long led fans to ponder which character is better, and of course the question that occupies a great many comic fans, who would win in a fight? However, with the popularization of Tony Stark thanks to 2008's Iron Man, which also coincided with the solidification in the minds of many fans of the validity of Nolan's Batman verse with The Dark Knight that same year, a shift occurred on the fandom landscape, in the form of a crossover ship. Now that is not to say that this ship hadn't crossed the minds, pun intended, of shippers before, but it had not with anywhere near the level of prominence that was seen at the time given the for many unexpected at the time rise in popularity of these two films with both genre fans and the mainstream public. The popularity of this ship steadily increased as Marvel began to over the years create a shared universe, the fabric of which was an encouragement to many crossover shippers as it seemed to be the kind of universe that would encourage that kind of thing, even if within the films it was of course for Marvel characters. And while it may not be the largest ship, it is one that is still active and acknowledged at the time of this recording, with for the most part a healthy degree of fondness. So with all of that said, why ship them? What is the appeal of pairing billionaire playboys Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark? Well for many it comes down to what fans want to focus on, the characters' similarities or their differences. While the characters may share a lot of surface similarities, they are actually quite different personality-wise, in a way that many feel would be complementary, as the pairing often focuses on the fusion of their movie-verse and comic selves, with an emphasis on the film version for Tony, especially as time went on. And this is often where the majority of each character's traits are derived, so a more movie-verse Tony meets a combined Nolan and comic-verse Batman. Tony is someone who has come into maturity late and still retains a lot of his sarcasm and bitter shield as coping mechanisms. He is simultaneously more open at least in terms of certain things and yet just as difficult to approach as Bruce Wayne. He has a tendency to be obsessive but not be able to find non-damaging outlets for it, working too hard, sleeping around with the wrong people, and drinking too much. In short, his obsession is not tempered or channeled with discipline unless he is helped in that direction by circumstance or an actual human compass. Despite this, he has a good heart and is heroic by nature, unable to not see the world's ills once they are revealed to him. As a result, he carries a heavy guilt 
complex that can also hinder his judgment, though again, with the right environment, he can excel. Bruce Wayne is much more enigmatic in personality, as the division between the man and the mask has become much more blurred, and they at times have completely different needs, or, as often occurs, one completely subsumes the other. Bruce Wayne lives his life under strict control, devoting almost everything he has to his quest for justice that some would label as a quest for vengeance. In place of a guilt complex, Batman works through channeling anger, turning it outwards as a source of fear. While he is viewed as a playboy, it is a misdirect and not a lifestyle he actually enjoys. Bruce also, despite appearances, enjoys companionship, although he doesn't fully know how to accept or respond to it. Despite this, there is a kind, soft part inside. Though it is often suppressed, it is part of what inspires such loyalty in others and simultaneously why some must shut themselves off from him forever, unable to bear seeing such humanity quashed, or are unable to handle that chasm between sentiment and actual human action, which isn't always the best. The wonderful thing about these characters is that they are malleable and have been presented in and interpreted in a variety of different ways that is constantly changing, which means for many shippers it is not difficult to see how they could conceivably fit together. For one thing, they can each understand the other in ways other heroes can't, both being billionaires, bankrolling their respective leagues, and constantly having to balance their public lives with their private in terms of their high-powered personas. Both also have more to them than meets the eye and are quick to protect those hidden centers. Some enjoy the idea of Tony teasing Bruce at some social function, or knowing full well how much the other hates it. Some enjoy the idea of Bruce at first being annoyed by Tony, but thawing as he gets to know him better, and see that there is more to him than just ego. Some feel Bruce could provide Tony with the necessary discipline and balance to help assuage his guilt and productively conquer his demons, although that interpretation really depends on how productive one feels vigilanteism is. Some also believe that Tony could withstand Bruce's brooding and perhaps get him to loosen up a bit and enjoy being a hero once in a while, which has been proven to be possible as demonstrated by Batman's various sidekicks. Some enjoy the idea of the two teaming up on either a detective or scientific level. Tony could soup up the Batmobile, much to Bruce's annoyance. There is also the fact that for crossover shippers, this pairing is particularly appealing as many fans already harbor a desire to see these universes together, and so amalgamating them is not uncommon even outside of a shipping setting. And even as a bromance, Tony and Bruce are popular, as many fans feel that these two need more friends, and many simply enjoy the many ideas that come with these two worlds existing as one. Particularly when it comes to these comics, the world of billionaires is a lonely place, when occupied only by moody superheroes or supervillains. As a result, there are some intriguing AU works out there. Some highlights include the two knowing each other as children and growing up together, the Justice League hating Tony, Bruce saving Tony from an abusive Steve, this was especially popular post-Civil War, and much more. And of course, being a crossover ship, there is a healthy amount of crack. So why would one not enjoy shipping Iron Bat? Well, for some, the similarities are not surface, but deep within the characters, especially depending upon one's own interpretation of them or which canon they prefer. For example, the DCEU's Batman is riddled with guilt in a very similar way to the MCU's Tony. So different iterations of the character may not match as well for some people, and for some who miss the crux of this ship, it may be too late for them to hop on board. Others feel that no matter the universe, these two would annoy each other, as these characters can be quite polarizing, producing a love em or hate em response for many people. And of course, given each character's prominence and popularity, they are of course involved in other ships, many of which are more popular. These include both canon and fandom favorites. As a result, this ship is rarely on people's radar. Also a factor unique to crossovers, they often get bogged down in a lack of understanding and annoyance. Many do not like crossovers viewing them as cheap gimmicks and also have a difficult time approaching the world, as some have a very rigid view of canon and world building, meaning that canon is what it is and there are boundaries that should not be crossed. So a common response to such a couple being suggested is often, they could never happen, they're different companies, or you know one's Marvel and one's DC, right? As if the shippers have made a fundamental mistake, lacking the base comic knowledge required to sort the characters into their appropriate comic houses. Indeed, many are embarrassed to admit that they like crossovers, canon or otherwise, unless it is in an ironic or crackish sense. However, crossovers are like any other fic or work. They can be well thought out or poorly plotted. Although crossovers do also have a tendency to be more for fun or more of an experimental narrative exercise, a what if as it were. So they do definitely hold more of an appeal for the more ponderous and creative out there. Although of course, even if one is extremely creative, Creative, there's nothing wrong with wanting to keep universes separate, to each their own. When it comes to Iron Man and Batman, they do have a lot in common and would work well together if they had to. But is that enough to get you to ship them? Do you feel that there's something to work with here, or do you just like the idea of two rich billionaire superheroes hanging out in the Batcave or at Tony's workbench? Will Bruce be able to survive this friendship without constantly fearing that Tony's just gonna announce who he is to the world? Will Oliver Queen ever stop sulking about all of the inadvertent shade in this video by the fact that 
even in fiction, in fanon, he is not really considered as a viable pair for Bruce. Almost never. Sorry, Ollie. And this despite sharing the same universe. Let me know down below, along with what you think about Quark's affordable hollow sweet prices. And yes, this, this shirt, I'm all about it. It's gonna come back. We're gonna be doing um, Garrick and Bashir soon. And of course I gotta wear this shirt. What else would I wear for that? Also, please share your Marvel and DC crossover ship of choice down below. I wanna read all of them. Thanks so much for taking a fun detour to crossoverville with me. And please be sure to hit that notification bell button so that you are informed every time I upload a video because YouTube's kind of random, but when they inform you about who people you subscribe to upload, it's kind of, yeah, it's difficult. But with a notification, it always happens, which is also good for me because I upload randomly. Schedule, what schedule? I upload when my daughter lets me. So be sure to get belled so that you never miss a vid. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you shippers. And of course, I will see you guys soon. And let's get to the outro. Bye-bye. This has been Shippers Guides of the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all my patrons who have ensured us another crossover ship for this month's video. So thank you so much for voting and get ready for that coming soon. And as always, stay tuned for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.